in a recent video I spoke about how you can adapt or how you can change your Google Slides in Thinkific so that it is responsive to a mobile. Now what we're going to look at today is how you can actually put that Google Slides into Thinkific. So I have two different types of slides that I want to show you and first I want to speak about why would we put Google Slides into Thinkific? What's the benefit of it? What's the purpose? And then I want to show you what not to do. And then I'm going to show you different ways that you can put it into Thinkific, it being your Google Slide. So let's first start off with why would you put Google Slides into Thinkific? So let me share first my screen here. And over here, I have my Thinkific account, but I also have two different types of Google Slides. So the first Google Slide I have here is like a presentation. This talks about learning outcomes and then it goes through and provides you brief information. Now this type of PowerPoint slide or, or Google Slides can be used in Thinkific as slides that people or your students can click through. They could also be slides that I have used to be able to do a video and then I'm giving the students slides to download. So think of these as just slides for your students to view, like a document or that they can flick through each slide. Then we have a different example here. And this example, you can see there's a lot down the left hand side here. And you can see that some have two buttons, some only have one button. And what this is, it is a interactive slide. It is a scenario based activity where there are different paths. So depending on what the student clicks on, they will be branched to a different slide. You can see here that all I've done is I have uh, created a hyperlink on the actual shape on the entire shape, not the text. And I'm saying which slide to point it to. So slide four, it goes to the next slide. But if they were to select this one, they will go to slide five and skip slide four. Likewise here, if they were to click continue, they go to slide six, right? So there's two different paths. Now here, when you do create paths in Google Slides, it doesn't show you the paths. There are other platforms you can use, other tools you can use to create branch learning that actually shows you the paths and is a lot easier to build. One of them is Maze Tech, which I've also done a video on and I'll put that in the description below. With Maze Tech, you can create different paths and the students can then access that from Thinkific because there is an integration with Maze Tech and with Thinkific. So that is a, another option. But if you do want to use Google Slides, you can create these scenario based activities that have branching in them. So now let's look at what not to do. So you might say, well, let me hit on this share button here um, to share. Or I can also, if I just move myself over here, I can also click on the file and I can go into share. For now, I'm just going to put myself right in the middle here so I can show you the two. For now, let me click on the share screen. And remember, this is what not to do. So you can say, right, I'm going to share with anyone. So whoever has this link can see it. And I'm going to change them from a reader or um, a viewer to someone who can comment and edit. So you would see that when you first share with anyone, they might be on an edit or they might be on comment and you might want to then change them to only a viewer. You might say, okay, well, that's cool. Someone can only view this. Let's have a look at what this looks like. If I copy that link and I go over here into Thinkific and I go into any course, this is my test account here. So any course, let's jump into and I'm going to add lesson. Now here we can add a lesson by using multimedia because I have a link and I can paste that link in there and I'm just going to go Google slide. Don't do this. Okay. If you're just coming on now to the video, don't do this. Uh, this is not the right option, even though you can put this multimedia in and it works because there is the iframing involved in this link that uh, think if it needs to read what we'll notice is if I go preview as an enrolled student you would see that it looks like this so someone would see your entire Google slides okay so this is not what we want our students to see 
you see how all of this now they can go and click on the presentation which is opened in another screen for me they can go in and click on the presentation which works but that's not what we want our students to do it's not user friendly this is something that we would want our students to move through if we were collaborating on something which we're not so that's why i wanted to show you that clicking on this share button and then copying this link is not what you need to do so let's now have a look at what to do. So the reason why I wanted to show you two different Google Slides here is that depending on what you want your students to do with the Google Slides, then depends on how you insert it into Thinkific. So remember that we have a scenario based activity here that requires some interaction from the student on the actual screen on the slide, whereas here, we have a slide that the student will just move through. So yes, there is interaction where they have to click on the next button, uh, but it's not an interaction on the screen where they have to make decisions. So let's have a look at this one first. First of all, I'm going to download this one as a PDF, not as a PowerPoint presentation, but as a PDF. Once that's downloaded, I will then come over to Thinkific and add a lesson. And I want to add a presentation. When we go to add a presentation, we are asked for PDF files, which is why we need to download it as a PDF for Thinkific. So I'm just going to then go and insert this from my download files. And you can see that it's titled as the name of my Google slide. We can rename that as well. So I'm just going to get rid of the PDF and then keep that as writing learning outcomes. Now what I have is each slide is a different slide or a different section in the presentation. And here I can actually record audio for each of these slides, or I can also upload audio. So I can have a lesson that then goes through each of these slides and the student can listen to examples as well as reading what's on the slide. If we go and have a look at this as an enrolled student, we would see that they have this slide here and the audio automatically plays for them. They then can click on the next slide and go into the next ones. Now, if we were to do the same thing, let's have a look at this. If I was to download this as a PDF and let's open this, we can see that the click buttons work. Okay, and if I go back into Thinkific and I do the same thing, I add a presentation then I'm going to get each slide here that appears as a different slide. Okay, so now I have all of my individual slides. Let's save that. And then let's have a look at what that looks like from the student perspective. So if you have two tabs open, the student and your admin, just refresh that slide so then you can see that activity that comes up. And so here, what you'll notice is that you cannot click on these buttons. So even though I went through that process of showing you what to do, this is why we would have to think, what do we want our students to do? And if we want our students to just move through these and click on next, then this works fine. But if we want them to click on the screen, then this doesn't work. So what can we do? With this example, what we want to do in Thinkific is we want to go in and we want to add a lesson here. Now we could add multimedia, which we looked at when we shared the, uh, sh the link and that didn't work. We cannot do a presentation here. We don't have a video. We don't want them to download anything. So what do we do? The answer isn't straightforward, but it is using a text lesson. So in this text lesson, you will notice that there are these code view or source code view buttons that you can click on where here you can type in HTML code. You will also notice that you can insert videos, you can insert images, you can insert other things here. And when you insert these files, when you insert these videos, they create HTML codes. So for example, if we were to just uh, select any image here, this image, for example, then the image will sit in here. But if I click on source code, you would see that it is written in code. So what we can do is we can add the code in there to embed our Google slide into this text lesson. Now, if you do have a account, a paid account here on Thinkific, you can then change this icon so the student doesn't see text 
Rather, they might see the multimedia lesson, which is this one here. Or you might want to change it to a presentation, whatever you wish. And you can change the text. Maybe you want it to be a scenario. Okay, so then the student doesn't see a text lesson. Maybe we can give them a little quiz scenario. Whatever you want. That's up to you. So let's have a look at how we get our Google Slides into this. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that and make sure that there's nothing there. Perfect. Over here in my Google Slides, I want to make sure that I go and click on Files and Share. Now we cannot use the same share button that we saw before. So we cannot use this one here. Rather, we're going to use this button here because now we have this option to publish it to the web. So when I click on publish to the web here, I have all of these different options. Apologies about the Spanish, but let me talk you through this. So we can have a link. Now this link will work if you want to use a multimedia lesson in Thinkific, that will work. However, at the beginning of this video, I spoke about how we can then update this to make it mobile friendly. And if you're using this link here, it won't be mobile friendly. So we're going to incorporate it, which is embed. OK, so we're going to go and embed it. Now, here I have options of how I would like to embed it. Here I have the size. If I want it small, medium or large, or if I want to personalize it using only pixels. So I can only use pixels here. I then need to use this option here, which is choosing how frequently these slides automatically move to the next slide. So how frequently they more automatically advance. And so I can say every second, every two seconds, three seconds, and I can go all the way up to every minute. Now, all of these are written in milliseconds. So if I go every minute, then in the code here, we can see that this says every every 60,000 seconds, every 60,000 milliseconds that there's a delay. And we can also see that we have our width, which is inch, and we have our height here of 560. So let's copy this over, right click and copy or control V. And here in Thinkific, we want to come back to our lesson and click on this code view button. And then we want to paste it all in here. And then we will be able to see our Google Slides in here, which is not loading just yet. So let's click save and then have a look at what this looks like from the student's perspective. So over here, we can see that the course is here. And well, the lessons here in the scenario lesson, and we're just going to go through and now we can see that the student can click on the screen. Now, in my video last week, I spoke about how if we were to go into this as a as a student who's on a mobile, for example, the Samsung Galaxy S8, that they won't be able to see the entire screen. They'll have to scroll across. And if they were to put their phone into landscape, same thing, they'll have to scroll down. So to learn how you can then jump into this course here and edit the code, check out my video from last week, which walks you through the steps of what you need to do to make this mobile friendly. Remember, I do post a video here on YouTube every single week about course creation. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you are notified of new course creation videos. Until next week, happy course creating.